Okay, on this particular uh, one, what we've got going on is we've got a pair of points. They're not written, so they look so much like points, but they are still points nonetheless. So I have the point. Uh, remember, the number inside this is like an x value, and the number it equals is a y value because f of x is equal to y. So the number there is the x value. So I basically have a point of negative 3 and then negative 1 would be about right there. Then I also have the point negative 2, positive 4, which would be there. So I can tell this graph is very steep, and I can tell that it has a relatively large y-intercept. So from this sketch of a graph, I can tell my slope is positive, and that I'm expecting a large y-intercept. Let's go now to get the exact points. Once you have a graph, you could count on the graph. So I could say, hey, on this graph, I've gone up, um, you know, one, two, three, four, uh, five, and I've gone over one. So I could say I've gone up five and over one to get there. Uh, you can also, even without the graph, you could have figured that out because you could say how far apart is negative one and four. They're five apart. Uh, one is you're one below zero and four above zero, so they're five apart. How far apart are negative three and two? They're one apart. So that means my slope should be five over one. If you're doing this method, looking at the numbers, I would still encourage you to sketch the graph to make sure you know for sure if the slope is negative or positive. So now that I know my slope, I need to find the y-intercept. And I'm going to use the y equals mx plus b method this time because this is way off the top of my graph. I could try to count it out neatly, but I think it's going to be safer to do it this way. y equals mx plus b. Pick which one you think is easier. I personally like uh, the negative 2, 4 a little bit better. So I'm going to say 4 equals uh, the slope I just found is 5. If I'm using the negative 2 and the 4, I have the negative 2 and then plus b. It does not matter which point you pick as long as you uh, use the x and the y from the same point, whichever one you happen to pick. So simplify gives me a negative 10. To get b by itself, I'll add 10 to both sides. So I end up with a b is 14. This does line up with my graph, which showed that my y-intercept is very large. So my final answer should be y equals um, a 5x plus 14. Already had the slope from my graph or by comparing the points, then I get a 14. I will go ahead and do one more of these. Uh, this one with the zeros is actually pretty straightforward, but it might scare some people, so we'll do it real quick. Uh, remember, this is the x and the y coordinate, so it's the point 1, 0, and that's the x and the y, so it's the point 0, 8. They've actually made this nice for you. Uh, if you sketch the graph, you can figure out that this 8 is actually the y-intercept. So that's my y-intercept right there. So it's going to be what goes on the end. And uh, I can definitely tell my slope is negative, and I'm actually going down 8 and over 1. So my slope is negative 8 over 1, which is just a negative 8. So y equals negative 8x plus 8 would be your answer. So sketching a graph sometimes saves you some time. Without the graph, you might have been at that one a little bit longer. If you were doing it, uh, comparing the numbers, you would say that those are 8 apart and this is 1 apart. But once again, sketching the graph is necessary using this method a lot of times to make sure you have the sign right, because at this point, I don't know if my slope is 8 or negative 8. In this case, since it's negative 8, that makes a big difference. Uh, please reach out to me if you have any questions. I hope these examples are helping you.